This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by Stealth EX, an instant exchange where privacy is the top concern. Go to StealthEX.io to instantly exchange between Monero and 450 plus assets without having to create an account or register and with no limits. Making Stealth EX a simple way to purchase Monero with crypto anonymously. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. All right, Justin, what's going on, man? Nothing much. Glad to be here. Awesome conference and uh, freedom, privacy, advocates galore. It's great. I'm sure you've had some amazing conversations, right? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite the quite the weekend. It's in uh, yeah, definitely very exciting stuff going on. Luke's full chain membership proof stuff, and this has led to more conversations that unfolded as as the weekend's gone on. It's uh, it's just been cool. It's like it's like the Monero Research Lab forum, but in person. I'd say, <laughs> I'd say, yeah, it's cool. We got a lot of a lot of awesome heads together. How was the presentation? I wasn't able to see it, but I, I know you, you basically presented on, I guess, uh, once Seraphis is implemented, how, how would that could potentially allow for uh, improving light wallets where view keys are still used, but in a way where uh, privacy isn't lost for the user? So um, there is still some privacy issues with it that I got into in the in the in the talk as well, some pretty significant drawbacks to it, but better than than today's light wallets, and still gets you the experience of instant, like virtually instant loading when you open the wallet. So, but it's not, it doesn't like solve privacy issues. And I said it said in my talk to you, like I would still definitely recommend if you happen to not be running a node, um, then I would still recommend for the optimal for the ideal privacy experience. Uh, in that context, that you shouldn't be using that uh, like light wallet, like someone else's light wallet server either. Um, so, got into that a bit too, and I can I can explain it more a bit more fully too if you want to. Yeah, maybe give, give the uh, initial overview and and pitch of what the talk was. Sure. So, current light wallets, you essentially you give your view key to the light wallet server, and that light wallet server is then able. We should just sorry. We should just clarify too, right? Like we're not talking about like uh, true wallets, like a Cake Wallet or Monerojou, because you know a lot a lot of viewers are, aren't even really that familiar, right? We're talking about something like a, a My Monero, where when you open it up, it's it's literally instant, right? Because you're not waiting for the the chain to sync, because the sync is happening on some other server, yes. right? And then that server is relying on view keys. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, current GUI wallet as well, the CLI wallet. They are not. They are not at all like this. Um, they essentially, what you ha they have to do is every time you open those wallets, it has to scan every transaction that's happened in the blockchain since you last opened the wallet. And that can take some time if you haven't opened the wallet in a while. Um, goes away if you're using Monero all the time. But uh, if you uh, haven't opened your wallet in a bit, you have some wallet you haven't used, you have to restore your wallet, you have to sit and wait while it, it scans every transaction. And so, yeah, with light wallets, you, you're giving up your your view key to a server somewhere that you could be running yourself or with something like with my Monero, the way it works is you, g you give up your, your private view key to my Monero server that then this information, they, they essentially know all transactions which you've received Monero in, they know the amounts and they can make very highly educated guesses as to what your spends are. And so essentially you're giving up a, like a pretty complete picture of your transaction history to the server with the exception of uh, destination addresses. Um, they don't, they're not seeing destination addresses. So, uh, and also zero change spends are a bit more hidden uh, in the light wallet in, in current. So the idea with this proposal, uh, what the talk got into, so the talk gave, gave that complete picture of how light wallets and their privacy profile today and the, the user experience, and then got into the proposal. And the, in the proposed, you get, um, the light wallet server is not able to see any amounts. And then in the, the key that you're giving up to the server, 
It's not able to cryptographically identify all of your transactions. In some cases it can, but it, it can't uh, in, in others and or your spends. So, but that, that caveat is a pretty significant caveat where you are still revealing your, your, there are circumstances in which the server can tell which transactions you've received or potentially spent Monero in. Um, but it can't see amounts. So there's still, there's a guaranteed privacy upgrade of it can't see amounts. And then in these other circumstances uh, where the server is able to, to trace your transactions and see which ones are yours. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that's good. I understand now. So it's, it's, so it's not taking us to uh, the level where you're, you're using uh, view keys in a way where it's equivalent to uh, using a pure wallet, right? We're, we're not, we're not there yet with this. Uh, which is why people might be interested in the in the node, oh, right? I was telling you about that yesterday. The the node and, and part of that is allowing people to easily run their own uh, my Monero server or LWS, right? I guess it's called right the open source version, and they can import their view key and not have to worry about it being exposed to anyone. Um, what do you think of uh, the full membership proofs that that Luke presented? I mean that. That's obviously really exciting. I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Uh, I am very excited. It's uh, it is an awesome development. Luke's been doing uh, great work on it. I've been working a bit with him on them. Done very niche niche components in it, um, but he's done like a great, an, an awesome an awesome job with that. And it seems it seems to be a, a feasible. There's there's some. He's gotten it down to a level that is absolutely within the, the realm of conversation of what can can be brought to Monero uh, as soon as it's it's pretty much developed and ready now we like we still need lots of, there's still a lot to be done in, in terms of review and, and security audits and there's still more work to be done to get it even even faster um, and so that that is that is progressing as as things are moving but um, it's generally very exciting to you know ring signatures ha have been a bit in notorious had some some issues uh, I, I'd say haven't fully compromised on any fungibility issues with Monero but in the, I mean privacy uh, it has been it I mean ring signatures compared to a full chain membership proof is a pre, it's a significant step up in in the privacy offering of Monero so right no more no more pinpointed attacks or at least none that we could identify right it gets rid of the Eve Alice Eve attack right and some some other uh, niche things. Um, so I feel like, you know, every, you guys, when I say you guys, the brains of the operation here, you guys all are kind of like experts in your own way. So when you hear the full membership proof thing, what, what's kind of sticks out in your mind as, Oh wait, what, in terms of what that's going to mean for implementation, uh, with surface, like what are things that are like you're thinking about? So Seraphist was designed modularly, and so that means we can slot in this full chain membership proof into Seraphist's general protocol um, is, the, is the concept and an idea as far as implementation, where it fits in transaction construction logic. As far as what needs to be done, you'll need um, the wallet will need to be able to fetch certain data from a node to be able to construct the transaction that'll be that that step will be will be slightly different than how it currently works of how it has to fetch a set of decoys um, and then know all about the inputs. And then in that way, that step of transaction construction will be different. Um, the data stored on the node itself will be stored in, uh, it's called a Merkle tree. And so that will be something that is updated every n, every n blocks uh, on the node side, which um, is, itself another implementation deal that'll that'll an implementation thing that needs to happen on the node side of implementing what is updated in the database on the daemon and then what gets fed to the wallet so that the wallet can take that data and then construct um, valid transactions using that data so those are basic basically the the, the steps that need to be done on top of all the, the verification of of um, of these new types of proofs within the protocol so and then, so obviously, addresses is a big part of this, right? Um, Seraphis is going to affect the way we our our, our address scheme is going to change, right? And uh, with full membership proofs, there would potentially have to be another 
change an address scheme or and I guess the idea is that we do it all at once so that that, that change only happens that only needs to happen once so another reason I'm expe especially excited about this about this development and it's it's progression um, is that so yes yeah, Seraphis slash Shamtis they bring this this change of a new address spec where everybody who is in the Monero ecosystem who currently has an address they've posted anywhere shared with anyone um, after that hard fork those addresses would no longer be able to receive Monero. Um, so you'd have to generate a new address after that point to be able to receive Monero and then spend... Um, not a new public key or anything you know, for noobs listening to. No new seed. It's, it's, There's no new seed. So you, you, you keep your seed, but your address would change. So that is a, is a major overhaul to the ecosystem, I would say. That would be something that is, uh, I mean, Monero hasn't, ex hasn't gone through at this point, and it's a, it's a very significant change. So ideally would be something you'd want to avoid um, putting, putting the entire ecosystem through. And so this research now that Luke has, has progressed is a demonstration of how we could, when we make that change to a new address scheme, no one would need to generate new addresses after, and we can ha we can have full chain membership proofs either in. And he what he's pushing for is to be able to have it all done as part of when Seraphis releases. But even if uh, we can prog and Seraphis can progress while developers work on on moving it forward, um, that can move forward with the understanding that even if people switch addresses, then we could then slot in full chain membership proofs afterwards um, and not have without to go, to yeah, without having to change. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So the, the inner workings, the inner, like, Seraphis could be implemented with, with the cryptography, like the inner, the inner workings of the, like, the, the address scheme would still work for both. And so, yeah, that, that's... Uh, I'm just curious, what, what's your take? I know it's, it's more of a, perhaps a Luke thing, but what do you think the likelihood is that um, full membership proofs end up getting implemented with Seraphis off the bat as opposed to implementing Seraphis with these new addresses and then adding full membership proofs? Um, I guess it, de it depends on how security auditing progresses, how the, like, the, the work required to bring it down to a, a bring down performance to a, its level that is deemed like it's optimal once that stuff's done and then all the work necessary to get it implemented. I think, I mean, it's hard to say. I, I would, I, I hope, I hope likelihood, I don't, maybe coin flip. I'll, I'll say coin flip. We'll say, I'll go with that. 50, 50 of like, if it can, if it can go in at the same time, but, I mean, we'll see, we'll see, like, we'll see how this is. It's still fresh and, and, uh, research is, is ongoing. So they're, they're, it's hard, tough to say. I did, yeah. Is there anything that the community can do? Like, you know, guys like me, Joe Schmo user, the users is, I mean, I guess there'll be perhaps uh, things we, we could donate to, right? Uh, magic grants and stuff. I imagine there's gonna be different different proposals that are gonna be put out there that all relate to this task. Yeah, I'd say definitely be on the lookout for future future proposals, either CCS or through the magic grants that are related to, to pushing this research forward. Uh, definitely be on the lookout. I think those, those will probably be coming at some point in the near future. So that. Awesome, man. Justin, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.